Hi everybody, and thanks for joining me today. So we'll start with the picture of where we're working today. We're well into the uh, second pass of the fountain here. So completing the fountain on this pass. And then we will have one more. So yeah, I haven't really got much done since my last uh, Stitch With Me session because I've been busy with my uh, apple harvest. I get about 3,000 apples from my tree to deal with. So yeah, it's a, it's a lot. So I've been busy. I made um, blueberry apple jam and then the rest into juice. So I usually do. This year I actually made a couple of tutorial videos of how I did that in case you are curious. They are up and live on my channel. Yeah, I tell people it's actually not that complicated. It's just very time consuming, especially the juice. That one takes forever. I always kind of joke that every year I have to forget how much work it is uh, before I'm willing to tackle it again. <laughs> yeah. The actual like canning part where you cook the juice and, and preserve it, that's, that one's, that part's pretty easy, but the um, making it, yeah. That one takes a while because of the um, coring all the apples takes forever. And it's kind of, um, it's not a motion I usually use, you know, so. Um, and I'm short and some of the apples it can be quite tough to get the core wedger thing to go right through the apple. So I have to sort of get up on my toes and put all my weight into it. And uh, yeah, you do that motion a lot of times and uh, you'll be pretty sore and tired, so. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, I looked into getting um, an apple press, which is almost like a, like a cheese press where it's like this big round um, barrel, basically. And then it has the big, um, the big um, top on it, which is on like a giant screw almost. So you screw it down and it squishes all the apples and all the juice comes out and everything. But uh, they're like three, four hundred bucks for even the cheapest one. So I went, eh, never mind. My husband says maybe he'll build one, but yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, that's there's like wooden ones. And then there's stainless steel ones, which of course are even more expensive. They're like a few thousand dollars. I'm like, well, I'm not doing this as a business. It's just for personal use. So it's really not worth investing that much. I mean, I have to make juice for like, you know, 300 years before I got my money's worth back. So, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I tried also using just a single core, but I found that was actually harder than just using the wedger. For one thing, it was just one hand, so then it's unbalanced and one arm is more sore than the other. And uh, so, yeah. And also the core was supposed to be like, you push it through the core and then it's supposed to open up and the core is supposed to just drop right out. Yeah, it doesn't. It sticks. So you're still having to manually pull the core out after each apple. So I just went, okay, freaking forget it. <laughs> uh, so I go through basically a new um, apple wedger like every year. Because yeah, when you're cutting 3000 apples, sometimes more, gets dull pretty quick <clears throat> and unlike a knife there's not really a good shape way to sharpen it you can't really use a stone on it easily so yeah fortunately <clears throat> so yeah taking a bit of a break today because um there's apples on my tree but i can't reach them they're too high i have to wait for my husband's been away on business he's coming back tonight late at night so tomorrow he's gonna um he always shakes the tree and gets the last of the apples to fall off doesn't matter if they hit the ground and get bruised because i'm juicing them anyway so yeah and uh so because i can do it but i'm not as heavy as him so i can't really get a good shake going on that tree and get the apples to fall off so yeah my neighbor gave me this um big long apple picker uh thing it's like got a basket on one end it's a really long pole like like you know 10 feet long or something so I was able to get down more apples than I usually can by myself 
but I'm too short. My son tried, but he's only like an inch taller than me, so <laughs> he couldn't reach much further than I could. <sighs> oh, maybe in a couple of years. Ugh. Yeah, and he's not that much heavier than me either, so he couldn't really shake the tree either. So again, give it a few years. I'm sure he will be, so. <clears throat> so yeah, yesterday I made three gallons of concentrate, and uh, it's sitting and chilling. And so after I finish this um, Stitch With Me session, I'm going to go and uh, cook it, put it into jars. Well, I said I made two the day before and then three yesterday, so that's five total. And I usually get about seven to eight um, gallons of concentrate off the tree. So that means I am almost done, like three quarters done, two thirds done. So <clears throat> yeah, there was that one year that it went wild and we got 90 liters of course, that was um, when I was still watering it down. So I'm guessing if it was concentrate, it would have been more like 60 to 70 liters, but that's still a lot. Because, yeah, I usually get about 40. So I don't water mine down. I jar it as concentrate. And then that way you can adjust it to your taste. And um, we like to add um, sparkling water to it to get uh, sparkling apple juice. So, <clears throat> yeah, it's kind of one of the big reasons we bought a, a soda stream. And you're not allowed to put um, anything that isn't water in the soda stream. We were bad and we tried that at first, but it um, bubbles up and gets into the mechanism and then it gets stuck. So, yeah, there's a reason why they tell you only carbonate water <laughs> because when the water shoots up there, well, it's just water. It's not going to get sticky. So, my husband had to take it apart and clean it. So, yeah, we learned our lesson. So, from now on, I jar my uh, juice as concentrate, and then you can just add the water. Plus, it's kind of nice because you can adjust it to your own personal taste. Some people like it stronger, and some like it a little more watered down. So, yeah, works out well. And I liked also it takes up less space on my shelf. Because, yeah, that year that I had almost 90, I had 89 liters, so almost 90, it... Uh, I had to double stack my um, my jars in my cupboard <clears throat> to get them all to fit. And uh, you have to be careful when you stack them. You don't want to stack them directly on top because that can mess with the seals. So you have to stack them sort of staggered between two jars. So yeah, then you have to be careful when you're taking them down too that you don't, um, you know, cause an avalanche and uh, break a bunch of them because that would be... Not good. Okay, so that's a short one. I'm gonna start a new piece for right here. Yeah, although I have tons of jars now because um, well, I found some at the thrift store. They were selling them like $3 for a dozen jars. So I snatched those right up. And um, <clears throat> they, uh, I had some friends who were cleaning out basements and stuff and found their uh, grandma's old jars and nobody in their house does any canning. So they're like, hey, you want them? Like, yeah, give them, me, give them to me. So yeah, they're the old um, Canadian jars. They call them jewel or gem jars. So of course my husband will joke they're the Gemma jars. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they're like a size between the standard lid and the wide, wide mouth lid. And they don't make the jars anymore, but thankfully, uh, the Benadryn company still makes the the snap lids and the rings, so they can still be used. Because, yeah, there was talk that they weren't going to make them anymore, and there was a huge protest because so many Canadians have had tons of jars that would be useless then for canning at that point. It would be such a shame to see them uh, <clears throat> all end up in landfills or whatever or even recycled but yeah it's actually quite interesting they said the um the two-piece snap lid that we used was invented oh, I think before world war one but it's it's at least over a it's at least a hundred year old technology 
and uh, it's interesting how you know so much changes and then some things they just don't change it like at all so yeah we're, we're still using the same style you know snap lids that have been used for generations before that they had the um, glass lids with the uh, rubber gasket and I have some of those antique jars but um, they are really hard to get open without butchering the um, rubber seal and they're more expensive than the snap lids so I don't really use those that much but yeah they seal so well because I remember asking my sister-in-law who also does canning I said well how do you know if they're sealed because you know the regular two-piece lids you push in the center and it flexes if it's not sealed and if it doesn't flex then you know it's sealed and she said well you can actually take those and pick them up by the lid the seal is so strong and you know carry them around so uh yeah they actually seal harder I think than the um the snap lids you can buy nowadays but yeah then the problem was getting those jars open was yeah really difficult almost dangerous using a butter knife you know if you slip you could hurt yourself <laughs> prying those open and then yeah prying it open basically almost always wrecked the uh, rubber gasket so yeah I still have some of those jars but um I can use the modern lids on them <clears throat> yeah the rings on those were longer though instead of the standard being about that big they're like twice as twice as big because of course they the glass jar lid is much thicker you know it's like half a centimeter thick instead of like you know a millimeter thick so <clears throat> yeah I only have about a dozen of the antique ones somebody gave those to me so they're very pretty though because um they're not like just clear jars they actually have like um almost like a diamond glass pattern in them it kind of refracts the light and stuff so yeah quite pretty eh? right now I'm storing um some pasta in them <laughs> yeah plus of course the um the glass jar antique ones you don't really want to use those for pressure canning they're just um they're weaker and uh you're more likely to get uh, an explosion which is not good <laughs> i haven't pressure canned in a while though now that i have my uh, instant pot yeah i used to pressure can um chicken and broth even some beef but uh i haven't done that in a while yeah, you need to pressure can foods that are low acid, like meat or beans, you know, vegetables, if you're not pickling them. Um, because you can't get it hot enough in a water bath canner to uh, ensure that it is safe. The pressure canner, it gets hotter. And uh, yeah, you need to get the internal temperature up to a certain level to be sure that you've uh, <clears throat> destroyed any botulism spores or harmful bacteria. So. So I've done pressure canning. It's a little tougher though, I found. It's it's more work. It takes a lot longer because, you know, if you're processing meat, it takes like an hour and 15 minutes. Whereas when you're processing something like jam, it takes seven minutes, you know, so it's much faster. <clears throat> so yeah, I still use my pressure canner, but as a water bath canner now. I bought a cheap water bath canner before I did pressure canning. And um, the thing warped after like two uses. And so they gave you this like handy um, uh, basket, wire basket thing that hooks over the edge and then you put your jars in, then you lower it and then you can pull it back out so you don't have to like pull them out individually with a jar lifter. But yeah, it warped after like two uses. So you put the jars in and they'd start collapsing towards the center which obviously is not going to work, so, uh, yeah. <clears throat> so that canner is more like a great big bucket now. <laughs> when I made um, a huge batch of jam one year, I made uh, 40 cups of fruit. So um, 
I put it in that that giant old canner to mix it all up because um, I don't cook it. I didn't cook it in one batch. I cook them in separate batches of 10 cups each. So four, four little batches. I say little, but you know, 10 cups of fruit makes quite a bit of jam. It makes about eight or nine um, pint jars. Sort of depends on what fruit you use because um, some of them, they foam up a lot more and you have to skim the foam off before you, um, you can it. So yeah. And then some of them don't really foam at all. And so you end up, so it's kind of an approximation how much jam you'll get out of it. Sometimes I get only about, you know, six jars out of a 10 cup batch after all that foam was lost. Sometimes I get like 10 of them. So it really depends. Yeah, strawberries are really bad for foaming all over the place. Because, yeah, usually what I do is I start with my berries. You know, you boil them and then strain them and puree them. And um, I will keep using the same water to uh, to cook the uh, apples in. So the apples get to absorb some of the juice from the previous fruits. With uh, strawberries, they foam so bad that you can't do that. Even after the strawberries themselves have been removed, the remaining juice left in the water will still foam like crazy and uh so i would actually have to change out the water and get fresh but uh when i used blueberries or cherries uh anything else i did uh peaches once um I did pear and apple once yeah um oh and plums once those were fine but strawberries yeah they're very bad for foaming foaming up and making a huge mess Speaking of messes, a bit of a tangle here. I might reset, we'll see. Oh, we got that free. Yeah, it's kind of nice because uh, one of my friends, she had this big bag of plums in her freezer. She says, I don't know what I'm gonna do with this. And I said, and it was kind of, you know, almost half freezer burned or whatever. And I said, well, I'll take it. I'll make jam out of it. So I made a uh, plum and apple and then I gave her, I gave her a few jars as thanks for the plums, so. We were all happy. <laughs> the plums didn't get wasted, they got used up. And I got free fruit. Cause yeah, with the jam, you're not really gonna save any money making homemade. It's more just for the novelty of having homemade. It's only really worth it if you get the fruit for free. Same with the apple juice. Like, you know, I'll end up with 40 liters of juice, but it took me a week to make it so. Yeah, you don't really save any money. It's just, didn't want to waste the apples because um, the first few years we lived here, we didn't really know what to do with them. And uh, you can't donate them to the um, food bank because it's perishable. And uh, couldn't give them away, I tried at the time. Um, my son was still little and I was still going to this mums and tots group. And uh, I brought some, you know, boxes and bags and said, hey guys, help yourselves and like, people took maybe three or four apples, you know, and I had over, you know, so many thousand and I messaged people in town saying, hey, if you want apples, come over and nobody wanted them. I couldn't give them away. And I hate wasting stuff. So yeah, that's when my, I tried them. Um, I dehydrated apples one year, but we didn't really use them that much. So it took forever to use them. I ended up giving a lot of those away. So I mostly use my dehydrator to make them um, beef jerky. It's actually really nice. You can buy um, a jerky gun, they call it, from uh, like my hardware store had it, and it almost looks like a giant cock gun. And um, you can use, that way you can make beef jerky out of ground beef. Because yeah, you mix it up, you load it into this big, and you uh, squirt out like about half inch wide, um, almost like ribbons of meat onto the dehydrator and then yeah and I found actually I ended up liking it better than traditional um jerky the texture was nice because it was chewy but not too chewy so <clears throat> yeah I haven't made it in a while but uh I'll often when the um when the grocery store has you know a bunch of meat that's um it's still good but you know it's going to 
get to its sell-by date in a day or two, um, and they'll mark it down for 30% off, I will grab a bunch of it and then make a big batch of jerky. You want to use, of course, the leanest meat you can find. I did it with um, regular ground beef once, and oh my gosh, there's just grease dripping all over the place. It was nasty, so yeah. I only use the uh, lean or extra lean ground beef, and that makes a really nice, really nice jerky. I haven't made fruit leathers yet, but I really should try that too. Because, yeah, they say you can also do that. I could do that with the apples, you know, puree it. And uh, could mix other fruits in there. And then you put it on some parchment paper in your um, dehydrator. <clears throat> and then, yeah, makes a nice, yummy uh, fruit leather. But that's one I haven't done yet. Maybe one day. Yeah, I made applesauce one year with the apples. And I made not just plain, like I made flavored ones. So I had strawberry applesauce and blueberry flavored applesauce and peach, although peach, you really couldn't taste it, which is weird. It just tasted like regular applesauce, <laughs> even though it was like a third peaches. So go figure. Um, and uh, I think cherry, all sorts of different. And then hardly anybody ate them. It took forever to use it up. So I haven't done that since. <clears throat> Just not big applesauce eaters, I get guess, but um, yeah, juice, juice we do drink quite frequently, so that has turned out to be my preferred way of preserving the apples. Yeah, and sometimes too, they'll have um fruit that goes on clearance. I'll do the same thing, take it and make jam out of it if it's earlier in the year and not time for my um, apple harvest yet. I'll actually prepare it, you know, wash it, and uh, and then freeze it in, uh, in Ziploc bags in my freezer. And then when it's time to make, do the apple harvest and make jam, I just pull them out. And you don't even really have to cook them much after they've been frozen. They're a lot, they're pretty soft. So they uh, get pureed quite easily. See, so, yeah, I have an old style food mill that I use, which uh, is like a, just a crank. And they used to use it to make baby food. Well, I've never made baby food out of it. It's been only for making uh, applesauce and, uh, and uh, puree for jam. And it's nice because it, um, it removes all the, uh, the seeds and skins and stuff stay at the top. And all the, the main part of the fruit gets squeezed through and make, made into a puree, so. Okay. Yeah, the jam makes nice gifts for people too. Oh, that one did not come up correctly. <laughs> Pardon me. I'm gonna have to uh, go back. Otherwise, there's going to be a little blank bit of uh, white there. So, yeah, my uh, my son's at school for a new school year. Grade 10, holy cow. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> uh, like, wasn't it just yesterday he was starting kindergarten? My word. I can't believe how time flies. And yeah, other kids who were in, you know, the moms and tots group with him, some of them had kids who were, you know, couple years older and stuff and some of them are going off to college now like holy mackerel how the heck did that happen how are they big enough to do that oh, I know that's gonna happen before I know it because he's only got three years left of high school not sure what he's gonna do told him to start thinking about it although you know don't be too anxious. We'll figure it out when we get there. But yeah, he's thinking he might want to go into something like 
like welding or, you know, fixing cars because he loves vehicles. And uh, so, yeah, he's thinking of doing some kind of job where you work with your hands. Like his dad. His dad's an engineer, so. <clears throat> Yeah, look, the kiddo's learning to drive, too, so. Huh. He's also learning it earlier than me. I didn't learn until I was an adult. <clears throat> yeah, honestly, driving still makes me anxious. But I like the freedom it gives me. And out here, it's pretty hard to uh, survive if you can't drive. It's um, because it's so cold, right? A lot of times in the summer and stuff, I'll walk down to the uh, the grocery store, and uh, you know if I pick up a few things. But I mean, when it's minus forty out, you're not going to be doing that because yeah, at that temperature, you're Exposed skin can freeze within a minute. So, yeah, my husband went outside once to clear some ice off the deck, and it was minus 50. And uh, he got frostbite on his ears. I told him, because he put a toque on, so it covered the top of his ears. But I said, you know, get a scarf, wrap it around your face so only your eyes are showing. He's like, no, 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 I'll be fine. And then he came, he's like, oh, my ears hurt. I'm like, well, I told you. <laughs> You're going to get frostbite. So I, he got like, they said the precursor to frostbite, like frost nip, they call it. So it didn't actually kill the skin, but it was like white and frozen and very, very painful when it heated up. So yeah, he learned his lesson. I told him he can't just tough it out. You know, skin will freeze within a minute or when it's like minus 50, like 30 seconds. And it doesn't matter how tough you think you are. It'll happen to you too. So yeah. Okay, so what I'm going to do is do those, and I'm going to carry this back up to that top corner. Darn it, that is not... It's harder to come up in that hole because there's three other threads there versus this one where there was only one other thread. So sometimes I will do that just to um, keep things looking neater. I don't really care that much what my back looks like, so... <clears throat> <clears throat> okay. So yeah, as I was saying, my husband has to shake the old tree because it's really tall. So we're going to try and keep this tree from getting it as tall. We're going to prune it every year. So it will get tall, but we're hoping to keep it a little easier to uh, harvest the uh, the branches. Yeah, they have these um, tree shaker machines on um, in orchards, but I mean, they're super expensive. Yeah, because that's for, you know, a business or they'll actually go around and shake each tree so that people can then easily gather the fruit. But uh, I mean, I wanted to buy a big, long telescoping hook so that I can grab the branches and, and shake the apples down. You can't find that kind of thing anywhere. There's a boat hook. But it's not as long as I need it to be. And it, like, the hook was plastic. And so, I mean, it's not strong enough to do what I need to do. Because, I mean, it's just meant to grab a boat and sort of drag it into the water and or up to the dock. And, of course, because it's in water, there it doesn't, you know, doesn't have that much resistance. So, yeah, what I wanted is just not. And you can get a telescoping pruner that's super, super long. But I didn't want to prune it. I just wanted to... Um, be able to grab the branches and shake them so yeah
needed to actually prune the trees too um, because uh, yeah I noticed on my small tree which is still obviously small it um, it doesn't have very many really little apples my big tree will have quite about a third of them will be tiny little like ping pongs and ball sized apples so I think the smaller tree, almost all of the apples, like 99% of them were nice big baseball size. So I'm guessing because it's not as overgrown, it's more efficient in making the fruit. So um, yeah, we're gonna try and keep that decently pruned so that it, uh, cause I mean, I would rather process 2000 big apples than, you know, 3000 medium and small ones. <laughs> it goes a lot faster if they're bigger. Okay, I'm just going to put this aside for a second and see how long this piece is. Not very okay, because that determines where I want to park this one. This one is longer, so put it there. And actually, I think I'm going to unthread that because it's out of my diagonal. <coughs> Yeah, or I went looking. I was hoping there was a core machine. I was looking for some kind of like a press where you could like put the apple in and like sort of pull a handle and have it remove the core so that it's uh, less work, but such a thing apparently doesn't exist. Or if they do, they're big mechanical ones that are meant to process like 3,000 apples a day and they cost like two grand. So again, <laughs> this is not worth it if it's just for personal use, not investing that kind of money. Okay, I think I'm going to, I'm just going to trim this first, and then I'm going to untangle all this, reset. So as you can see, it's getting a little bit snarled. So, as we kind of gently separate it, it's usually salvageable. Oh, we got a bit of a knot here. Let's see what we can do. No, we're good. Yeah, I've had a couple of times where it was just so caught that I, some, a couple of them were completely knotted around each other and I had to cut it apart, but that's pretty rare. 99% of the time I can get these. I can get these free. So... So 79.35%, so we're closing in on 80. Won't hit that today, but I'm thinking next week. Because, yeah, the rest of this week I'm going to be finishing up my apples. Today I've got to cook those three gallons of concentrate I made. So that'll make probably about 16 uh, liters after you account for the uh, juice, or I mean the juice, the uh, sugar that's added. <clears throat> I add a fair amount because my apples are very sour. So yeah, they're not really good for eating straight, but they're great for making jam or juice or applesauce or anything where you're gonna add a bit of sugar. It was kind of nice when I made my flavored applesauce. Um, Often I didn't need to add any sugar or not very much because the berries or whatever that I added to it, blueberries and stuff, sweetened it up so that it was, um, it was still tart, but not like your eyes are popping out of your head tart. Oh, have I done something wrong here? Or am I in the wrong place? Hang on a minute. Let me see, where am I? No, I think I parked something wrong. Okay, that is the number three. That is the, ah, uh, I see what I think I did. Yeah, I don't know what I did here. All mixed up, hang on a minute, what am I doing? Oh yeah, why did I park that all the way up there? That's not right. Yeah, this is the 3807. It should be parked here. I don't know why I parked it all the way up there. And this one, parked under the wrong thread. That's my problem sometimes. I park threads based on um, other threads. 
And if I'm not paying attention, they're in the wrong place. So this one should be parked here. Just count from my grid line. Yes. Okay. <coughs> Pardon me. Yeah. Okay, so this is, both of these are pretty long. So, not in this diagonal, but I think in the next one or two, we're going to get the other swans on the other side of the uh, fountain. It's my favorite part of the design. I was so excited last pass across when I got the, uh, the little swans near the... Uh, top left of the fountain. Okay, so put that there. You know what, that is all so close to the edge and it's all pretty much unthreaded that I am just going to set those all aside and carry on downwards. Yeah. Okay, so this one that I just reparked correctly. Yeah, I think the last of the pretty much the purple flowers at the bottom of this diagonal. I'm gonna get into the uh, orange and yellow flowers and the hedges on the other side of the uh, fountain. And then before I know it, we'll be at the pillars again and be done another pass. Yeah, it takes about three months to do a pass across this, uh, my last pass across this pattern is only 50 rows instead of 60, so it should go a bit quicker. Okay, so again, I'm gonna check the lengths of both of these threads. Okay, that's a long one. This one is medium length. Okay, I'm gonna carry on with both of them. I'm going to park this one a little further over to the right. I'll park that right there. And then this other one will get parked in the ones that are a little bit closer. Okay. Okay, so this should be enough for these four stitches here. <coughs> yeah, my guinea pig had me a little worried this morning got up and I got her lettuce and I went to her cage and she didn't come out. She's usually, as soon as you come out of the room, she is out begging. <laughs> Even if she's quiet, she's out there standing, looking at you all, hopefully. Is, is it veggie time? And I uh, got him and there's nothing. I thought, oh no. Then I went over and I looked and I peeked under her blanket. And as soon as I lifted the blanket, she whoosh, stuck her head out. And it was like, oh, food? So I was like, oh, okay. And I said, I think it's because, you know, summer vacation's over. I was getting up earlier because... We were getting up around, you know, eight o'clock. And uh, so she was used to that. And then now that uh, the school year started again, it's getting up at seven. So I think she wasn't ready for it. And I think, well, her hearing's still pretty good. So I don't know, but uh, yeah, she must've been sleeping hard or something. They generally don't sleep that deep, but yeah. Yeah, I'm really gonna miss her when she's gone. Try not to think about that too much, I guess. Mm 
Okay, and then this one is the one I said it was just enough. Yeah, we're gonna end this off, so that will be perfect. funny because um when my husband's away usually at least one night I'll take a kiddo to McDonald's because I don't feel like cooking and my husband really doesn't like McDonald's he almost never eats there so uh yeah and I'd forgotten because um he likes to go to the youth center it's open four nights a week and uh so he went there and then he texts me and he says can you come and get me and we can go to McDonald's and then I'll come back to the youth center it's like okay if you really want to so that's what he did. So he was there for like an hour. I came and got him. Went and had our McDonald's. Then uh, he went back and hung out until the center was going to close. And I had to come pick him up. So, <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, he still likes to get a happy meal. Because he likes the toy. Even though, you know, he's getting big for it. So um, what I usually do is I get a larger supersized fries with my meal and then what because I can't possibly eat them all and so then whatever I don't eat he gets to eat about half of them so that's enough to fill him up with after he's had the whole his nuggets and fries and yogurt and everything that comes with the happy meal and then <clears throat> yeah he uh he helps me finish off my fries Yeah, I was kind of annoyed because I got um, I got a McDonald's app. I was like, oh, earn points towards it. And then I find out the points expire after like six months. Like, well, bite me, you know? I don't like when points expire. I like collecting things where I can just collect them until I'm ready. Like um, Superstore points. They'll give you deals sometimes because they want to get points off their books where like um if you redeem you know two hundred dollars worth of points you get three hundred dollars worth of stuff occasionally they'll have that so then I can do that but they don't force you to use them you can keep them forever so often I will collect them throughout the year and then use them at Christmas time because you know <laughs> it's kind of nice to have a break you're spending more money that time of year so if you can get some free groceries that works out well. I usually collect about $500 worth of points a year, so yeah. Or sometimes I'll just save them and then when I'm gonna buy an unusual purchase that I don't normally get, like um, a new soda stream machine after the old one breaks, I'll use my points or when I needed to get a um, some new uh, fry pans, I used uh, points for that, so. Yeah, kind of nice to have that on hand, especially because, like, I mean, I have to buy food anyway. So if they're gonna give me, a, if they're gonna give me points for free food, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, I actually got the um, their brand of credit card because they also give you one percent on all your purchases in points. So again, if it's for stuff I gotta buy anyway, I'll take it. And they have a gas bar too, which is also nice. You get bonus points for, for that. And my husband's work doesn't accept, they don't collect points. So I always tell him, if you're filling up at one of those places, you know, put our phone number in and then uh, you might as well get the free points. It's maybe only two or three bucks per fill up, but you know, why not? If they're going to give it to me. I'll take it. Free money. Yeah, and then they um, they also give you bonuses on stuff you buy often, which is really nice too. Like they uh, they track your spending habits, so I mean you are getting tracked. But I mean I don't care; they're gonna anyway. <laughs> and um, yeah, so I mean it's nice because like every couple of weeks it'll give me extra points on cheese, and it's like well I had to buy it anyway, so. You know, for every six dollars I spend on on cheese, they're gonna give me a dollar twenty worth of points. Like, well, I was gonna spend that money anyway, so 
bonus. <laughs> and they even, um, they give you offers. You're actually allowed to save them for another week. So if you don't actually need the cheese then, oop, bonked my camera, sorry. <laughs> if you don't actually need the cheese then, you can save it for the next week and you can just keep saving it until you need to use it. You can save up to four offers, which is really nice. So... Yeah, I said sometimes I don't feel like a real adult and then there's other times I'm all excited about all the points I'm going to get, so. <laughs> yeah, it's like I remember my mom would drive across town to go to this one store because I think it was every Monday or something was triple coupon day. So if you had like a 50 cents coupon, they gave you instead a dollar fifty off. So yeah, I mean, it really added up, so. We loved going there because they had a play area <laughs> for the kids. And then you got a free cheese stick, too. So, uh, yeah, that was nice. Yeah, I wonder if that, uh, that chain still does that or not. <laughs> they had a ball pit, which we loved, plus other stuff. Oh, sometimes they had free popcorn too. Oh, I think I parked something else incorrectly. Let's see. Put that right there. Okay, let me see. Yeah, I did that too. My gosh. Yeah. If I did that on camera, you probably were probably going, wait, what are you doing? <laughs> You're doing it wrong. Okay. We got her sorted out. I know, and these are all such similar shades, but uh, I've pretty much memorized them by now. What symbol is what color, and I know what shade that is. So. Yeah, we had a scorcher yesterday, of course, while I was making uh, <laughs> juice and steaming up the place with uh, from the boiling water from my canner. But uh, luckily, I knew it was going to be a hot one, so I turned on the AC in the morning, and it actually was stayed quite cool in the house. So, yeah, we're getting a little bit of a break today, and then it's supposed to be scorching for another three, four days, and then it's supposed to quite dramatically drop. So that'll, this is probably the last gasp of our summer here. Yeah, I had to get used to that. When I lived in BC, um, the summers, like we could start wearing shorts around April, sometimes even March, and then sometimes it didn't really start to get cold until mid-October, even later, but here, yeah, it's, uh, it's much faster. And, uh, yeah. Like we joke sometimes here, it's, we have winter in July. Yeah, we've had, um, <clears throat> our first snow, sometimes in September. And, uh, it snowed as late as May 29th one year. Like, it melted within an hour, but still, you know. Snow when it's almost June. Like, come on. We actually had a few flurries once when it was, um, even in June. Yeah. So. Said, you never know when it's time to, um, wash the mittens and scarves and toques and stuff and pack them away. Because, uh, I always feel like if you do that, you're tempting nature, right? It'll, uh, it'll snow one more time just to spite you after you've put them away. Somebody joked, they said, it's like, um, nature gets into an argument and then keeps storming back in saying, and another thing. 
I'm excited husband's coming home today. He was up in uh, yellow knife. <laughs> yeah, luckily there's not the same uh, travel restrictions because he had to go up there during uh quarantine and stuff and so yeah there was a whole bunch of paperwork he had to fill out and stuff about that he hadn't traveled outside of Canada that he hadn't you know didn't have any symptoms he hadn't been a close contact with any he had to do this like a couple weeks before and then yeah so it was and he said and it kind of sucked because you know he'd never been there before but he couldn't go anywhere you know in order to do the work there he was allowed to go from his hotel to the workplace and that was it like, he couldn't even go to restaurants or anything, so people would have to deliver him food. And, uh, yeah, so he said, oh, man, I was bored. So um, he ended up just working extra long days. And then, uh, oh, have I done another one incorrectly? My gosh, I tell you. Yeah. My goodness. Really wasn't on the ball. <laughs> Okay, let's try that again. Oy. Well, fortunately, because I have my grid lines, I can... Uh, I can uh, usually figure out where I went wrong pretty quickly. Yeah, just double checking with my grid lines now as I park, not just based on other threads because that's what mixed me up before, I'm thinking. Lots of threads here, but there's also some bigger bits of color here, so this part should go a little bit quicker. This is too short for me to uh, park it anywhere else, so it's going to be a close thing to get this last stitch out of it, I think. 
definitely not going to get any more. <clears throat> yeah, there we go. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Okay, we'll see if this is enough or if it's going to be time to. Yeah, we're going to have to end this one off. It's just too short. <clears throat> It's not very long. All right. You can see that this purple is a bit scattered around. I might end up having to do some stuff out of order, or we'll have lots of threads. We shall see what I decide to do. Another uneven one. Oh dear. <laughs> Throw it away. Okay. Mm. So I'm going to get out of that one as well. I have a lot of threads parked here, but they weren't terribly long, so. Oh, whoops. That. That did not go down straight, so it didn't disappear as well as I wanted it to. There, that's better. Probably wasn't that big a deal because uh, I think uh, where I pin stitched is going to be that color anyway, but uh, the perfectionist in me complained, so... Sure. Yeah, that 
wasn't very long, so let's start another one. didn't get both of those yeah, strands properly threaded through the eye of the needle there, so that's why that happened. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Let's try that again. There we go. Lots of this color here. Yeah, we still got quite a bit in this whole pattern. There's over 5,000 stitches still of this color. that again. Come on. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, so try and finish my apple juice this week and then the worst part though is the uh the aftermath it is so sticky and no matter how hard you try it's gets everywhere in the kitchen so um yeah and the only way to really clean it properly is to scrub it on your hands and knees <laughs> nothing else will do yeah I've tried other ways, but it was still sticky after I was done. So yeah, that is the only way to do it properly. So yeah, I can understand why places that do this as a business have a special juicing shed instead of taking over their kitchen. Oh. Yeah, I wouldn't want to do it as a business. That would be too much work. Can't be really be competitive either with the, you know, the big mass producers. Okay. Okay, whoops. Oh, goodness. There, I dropped the needle in my lap. I definitely don't want to leave it there to poke me. So I did all that so I could come back up here and do all these at once. Rather than going out of order. seem to 
Oh, and look at that. I did it again. Oh, am I in the right place? No, I am. I just parked this wrong again. I tell ya, I think this is the most times I've parked something wrong in a Stitch With Me session. Oh, my word. Okay. Yeah, that was one stitch over from where I should be. Boy. Yeah, I could tell because it was parked right in this spot and I need this for a different stitch, so I knew I had made a mistake. Luckily, nothing I need to rip out later. This is, again, why I prefer to work <clears throat> methodically without skipping stitches because as you can see if I hadn't just parked it there and done the stitch there that would have been wrong and then I would have had to rip that out and uh, redo it this way all I had to do was just pull the thread back and repark it in the correct spot no ripping out required so yeah some people say it must be slower changing threads all the time but for me the avoidance of mistakes that I have to fix means that uh, for me I find it faster to do it this way and uh, less frustrating because I hate ripping out mistakes, don't you? Especially after you've um, ended off the thread and then it turns out it was wrong. So now you don't just have to rip out your mistake. You have to rip out a whole bunch of other stitches so that you have a piece long enough to secure it again. And then you've got to redo a bunch and oh, that's just no fun. So. And of course, ripping out just takes so much longer than actual stitching. It's a way with every craft I find too. With knitting, when you've got a, you've got to uh, fix a mistake that's you know thirty stitches back, unknitting them takes three times longer than just knitting them. So. Uh, Okay, so now I can do this one and end it off, and it was in the correct place. <laughs> yeah, if I hadn't parked it but had done it, it would have been in the wrong place, and then... That would have been a problem. Okay, it was funny because uh, somebody said her husband got interested in watching her do this, so he was uh, talking about he might try it too. And she's telling him, oh, you know... Here's a way to fix mistakes or whatever. And he's like, well, I'm not going to make mistakes. It's like, yeah, sure, honey. <laughs> sure you're not. <sighs> oh, actually, let me take a look what's going on over here. Yeah, I think what I'm going to do actually is put my big long piece aside. I'm going to do a single stitch here for the short piece because I'm going to carry on. I can see a path that will make more sense in the next diagonal to use a long piece there. So, because then that way I can do these in one piece rather than doing this one parking here and having a separate one over here. So planning ahead. That's why I chose to do that. So instead, 
All I'm going to do is this one here, no parking, and then the others can be left to go with one thread there. And clear as mud. <laughs> Pardon me. So a bit of switching back and forth, but I haven't had to do anything out of order yet, so. Yeah, should be able to get one last stitch out of that piece. Okay, so 
Now I can finish off that last little bit. Let's see if I can uh, get this free without unthreading it. <laughs> bit of a maze here. There we go. I got it. Oh, gee. I hate when I do that. <laughs> Almost done. Got to thread it one more time. There. Yeah, in the last week of stitching, it wasn't on camera, but I got like three more zeros. So, woohoo, we are getting there. I love when a color gets down to zero. Okay, I was going to say let's go for an even 200, but this will actually be more than 200, so let's break 200 today before we quit, okay? Sounds good. Yeah, since I haven't been able to stitch for the last few days while I've been busy with my apple harvest, so this is probably all I'll get done today. I won't be have time to stitch more off camera because i got to get off my behind and... Uh, deal with those apples and also some other housework. <laughs> Got some laundry that needs folding and putting away and some more that needs washing and hanging out. Yeah, it is going to be a full day today, I think. This will be my last chance to sit down for a while. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, I almost put that in the wrong place. That was close. Yeah. That would have sucked because this is where I'm ending it off. So if I put it in the wrong place fixing that, I'd either have to fix it, rip a bunch out and fix it, or I would have to decide if I was willing to leave it, if it was close enough in color, if I was willing to leave the mistake, the personalization in. But I caught myself before I messed it up. Okay, so over 200. So uh, thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, dropped my scissors. <laughs> and I hope to see you here again another time. All right, thanks everyone.